measuring risk. Now, risk considers the tendency of people who have contributed their funds or resources into a business not being able to generate or receive the return that is due them. There are two forms of funding a business experiences. It can either be from people who have contributed resources to own a bit or a whole of the business, what we call the equity holders. They pay money or assets to own shares in the business. Others will also lend their resources, being funds or assets, to help augment the activities of the business. A business is initially funded by an equity holder or equity holders. But in the course of their activity, they might be in need of additional resources to help finance their operations or investments. So they might ask for more equity holders to join the fray of the business or resort to loan. Both options have its downsides and upsides. The equity holders will fear that their returns will not be paid because debt holders needs take precedence over this. So when there is profit, debt holders will be paid this. And when there is surplus, it gets passed on to the equity holders. So that becomes the risk or the fear of the equity holders. Debt holders, in as much as their returns are prioritized and their needs take precedence over that of equity. If the business has a high level of debt, it is an indicator that the business might not be able to work to generate the level of income necessary in order to pay off all the debt holders involved. With the long-term debt, which are the debt holders, they expect returns periodically. The period can be a month, half yearly, or annually. Now, their returns must be paid irrespective of the outcome of the business's operation for the period. So if the business rakes in profits or not, the returns that is due the debt holders must be settled. This is unlike the equity holders who only get a benefit when the business first generates profits after paying off all its obligated expenses. And then the business declares a dividend, which is the return that is due them. Okay, so the risk involved in equity being purchased is higher because there's no guarantee that your returns will come to you in a period. However, the reasons why people will go in for equity is that it grants them power to affect the operations of the business. So they can determine what must and must not occur in the business in order to safeguard their funds or to ensure the long-term survival of the business. For debt holders, they have no say in the fortunes or the activities of the business. In order to measure risk, we have to use jeering and interest cover to determine the risk level of an entity. So when we come to jeering, this measures the level of debt in the business, i.e. the level of amount that has been loaned to the business by third parties or entities, compared to the total value that is funding the business. So the total capital, one coming from equity and the one coming from the debt holders. We want to look at the proportion that the debt holders capture. So this measures liquidity such that if a business is highly geared, which means that it has a higher level of debt compared to the total capital structure that funds the business. Most of the income or the operating profit that it generates will go into servicing those debts by paying its returns. It means that there will be little left to pay off other obligations. If there is less jeering or less debt involved, then most or all of the operating profit will be reserved and the business will be in a better state. Settling other expenditures for there to also be a surplus to pay 
equity holders. The formula for genuine ratio is long-term debt, in other words, non-current liabilities, debt that is supposed to be called on in a period more than 12 months, divided by the total capital structure of the business, that is the long-term debt, the same value for the numerator, plus equity, which can involve share capital, plus reserves, share premium, anything belonging to the shareholders or members. And you multiply by 100. Now, if you get this GRN value, as with other ratios, you have to measure it against the prior period, a stipulated industry metric, or against a competitor. Now, if you do this, and the calculated GRN is less, or in some cases equal to the various threshold or parameters that we have outlined, then it means that the business is okay. Then the business is less geared. It's in a better position. However, if this figure exceeds what is expected by the industry or what other players in the same industry have achieved or what the business did in the previous period or in their books, then there's a cause to worry. The other measure of risk is interest cover. Here, we are looking at the number of times that the profit that the business has generated from its core operation can pay off the return that is due on the debt holders. Again, debt holders are paid a specific agreed amount as returns, which is the interest, at a specific period. And this is backed by law. It cannot be flouted unless there is an agreement that has been struck by both. If they can settle the interest multiple times over in a particular year, then it means that the business is in a better position because they wouldn't be in a desperate position to pay off their debt and there will be some left to pay off other obligations and the equity holders. The formula for interest cover is profit before interest and tax divided by the interest that is supposed to be paid. Then that will result in the number of times. Again, if you calculate this and you get five times and what you generated in the previous periods or a benchmark the business has set for itself for that year is let's say three or four, then the business is doing a human job. If it's also compared to an industry metrics and it is better than that or what a competitor is doing. However, if it's four short, the measures have to be taken. The business has to step up in generating more returns to pay off the interest. And going forward, they have to look at the kind of debt that they incur, the kind of debt that they secure, and the associated responsibility and terms. Let's test our understanding. We have a profit and loss here, sales revenue, cost of goods sold, with a gross profit of $60,000. We have salaries, utilities, depreciation, leading us to an operating profit or profit before interest and tax of $25,000. Then we have finance cost, which is the interest that is being paid on any debt that has been secured, $7,000. Then we come to the balance sheet. We have non-current assets with total current assets leading to a total asset of $435,000. Then we have the share capital and the reserves and also non-current liabilities. Then we have total current liabilities, which will lead us to also $435,000 for total equity and liabilities. So when we come to the solution, if we want to calculate the gearing, the formula again is long-term debt divided by the long-term debt plus equity multiply by 100. When we do so, we're going to get 44.68%, which is the long-term debt of $105,000, divided by the equity, which is the share capital and the reserves of $235,000, multiply by 100. So it means that the non-current liabilities, which is the long-term debt, is approximately 45% of the total fund 
holding the business. Interest cover formula is profit before interest and tax, otherwise known as the operating profit, divided by the interest that has been paid to determine the number of times. When we do this, we'll get 3.57 times, which is the profit before interest and tax of 25,000 divided by the finance cost, which is basically the interest of 7,000. This means that the profit that the business yields from its core operations can pay off the interest that is due on its debt approximately four times. So if the business works for one year, the operating profit that it generates, if they cease to work for the next three sections or the next three years, they will still be able to pay off their legal or fixed obligations.